Hello players, apart from standards, most people think HDMI cables are all the same, but it turns out that's completely wrong. Most HDMI cables are useless after about five meters, but these can go for up to a hundred meters, which is taller than the Statue of Liberty or Big Ben or some other really tall third thing. But how is that even possible? 3 Pro must have read my mind because I got an email from them and they was offering to send me these fiber optic cables to try out, which claimed to fix that. And as they are fiber optic, there's potentially no limit to their distance, but are they legit? And how can they be so thin? There's got to be a catch, right? Let's find out. We need to know how these work before I go plugging them into random ports. These are pure fiber optic cables and the ends is where the magic happens. These are detachable. Therefore, running them inside walls and things for like permanent installations and things like that is much easier. Unlike traditional HDMI cables, where if you want to upgrade them in the future, that can be a real pain. That's why the heads can be swapped out. So you don't have to replace an entire run of cables each time the HDMI standards people change the spec. These ends support HDMI 2.1B at full 48 gigabits per second bandwidth with HDR, eARC, and up to 8K60 or 4K 120, as you would expect. But when there is a new HDMI spec, say 2.2 or 3 or whatever random number they choose, you can just swap this out and you are upgraded. The cable itself uses fiber optic light, which can transmit data much faster than copper, which is what is in standard HDMI cables. The biggest issue with HDMI cables is that they lose signal over long distances, which can be a huge problem for home theaters, projectors, having gaming setups far away from the screen, or in a professional environment. Not not like this one. My problems are that our living room gaming PC, yes, that's a thing, is sometimes has a second screen attached to it used for chat while playing a game or something, which I, which I don't do that often because it does mean dragging out this huge chunky snake beast, <laughs> which I which I really don't like to do. We also have another screen in this room. And while I could use something like a Steam Link, if I want the best video quality, I'm gonna need to connect a cable. What I'm connecting right now is the 10 meter version, which is already double the spec of what the standard HDMI cable maximum length should be. Okay, and... Nothing. Well, that's a problem. <laughs> okay, let's have a look. Okay, I've worked it out. This was going to be my next talking point, but since it happened early, I'll tell you about it now. Um, these do need to be powered via USB. It's a tiny little micro USB connection in there. The source end is what you normally need to connect, which is what I've got plugged into the PC. But sometimes you need to also plug in the device end as well. I don't know why. I've tested this in the interim of this little testing bit uh, on a few different displays and devices, and I haven't had to connect it to both ends, just one. And But this time I need to connect it to both. I don't know why. And I'll tell you more about the USB power connection in a minute. Okay, so the cables need to be powered via USB. You get a little micro USB connection uh, cable with it. You get two, one for each end. You don't, you shouldn't have to use both ends, but sometimes you do apparently. And there's that. So that does make the end of the cable, uh, well, considerably more bulky. So that's something that you have to weigh up. But hey, it works. Look at that. This is 10 meters over HDMI, which is double what the cable length should be. And this cable is this thin. I mean, it's ridiculous. Okay, it's a little bit more fragile. We'll get to that in a minute, but it's ridiculous. And let's, I'm gonna go and grab my other 10 meter cable. I lied. So my other HDMI cable isn't 10 meters at all. It's five meters. And that is the maximum length that the HDMI length is, is spec for. So then look how thick that has to be to achieve the maximum length versus that, which is already at double the length that HDMI is spec for. And well, you know, it's, it's completely different. We do shift some of the bulk towards the connector end. So there is that. This audio sync test is the best one that I found on YouTube. I'll drop a link for that below. It's really easy to use. So moment of truth time. Again, I hope it doesn't fall over here because we've got a lot more testing to do. <laughs> right. That is perfect every single time. <laughs> so I don't know how much you can see on the camera here, but we are looking for the sound to come every time the ball hits that. So with my YouTube editing, there may be some 
delay that you see, but definitely here, there is absolutely no delay that is perfectly in sync. No latency added by the cable or the connector. Perfect. Let's carry on. So latency test was spot on. Good job there, Ropro. But this TV only outputs at 4K60, and I want to push it as far as we can. So they also sent me this 50 meter version, which is over 10 times the maximum length of what HDMI should be able to do. And I'm feeling nervous about this one. For them, not for me. <laughs> because I have a 4K 120 hertz gaming monitor upstairs, you know, for making YouTube videos. So let's see if this can do it. Okay, I'm gonna plug it in now. Let me know if it comes on. Did it work? I can't see, I'm 15 meters away. Actually, I've gone around the whole house and I still have all of this left. It's ridiculous. Let's see if it worked. Oh wow, it worked. Uh, why did I put the camera? in the doorway. That was pretty stupid. Anyway, it worked. I've got the keyboard for downstairs and this <laughs> is not going to work very well because it's talking to the computer downstairs, but it is still in 4K60. So we need to put this in 4K 120. I'm not super confident that this is going to work. <laughs> that worked. Okay, so it does 4K 120 over 50 meters. Ridiculous. So why aren't all HDMI cables built like this one? Well, there are some drawbacks. When using fiber optic cables, of course, the main advantage of these is distance. And with these special ones, it's the replaceable heads and the upgradable ends. But fiber optic is glass or resin in some cases, which is much more fragile than copper. So when you handle it, you can handle it just fine for the most part, but it won't survive really short or tight bends. If you don't have much space, you can get things like 90 degree or 45 degree angle HDMI connectors, so you can direct the connection to where you have more space. These need to be powered via USB at the source end. Now that shouldn't be too much of an issue as most devices that you're plugging into should have a USB port somewhere nearby, but it does make the end connector a well, a lot more bulky and not ideal for constant plugging and replugging. But these work and they work really well. Of course, they're not ideal for every use case and you shouldn't run out and replace all your cables with them, especially because it's a lot bulkier on this end. But if you do need some extra length or you want to try and play hide the cable, then that's exactly what I would use these for. What might make these 10 times better? Perhaps an articulating head. Some other HDMI cables have them. Join, join the club. That way I wouldn't have to go out and buy 45 degree uh, adapters for them. And, and DisplayPort. I want to see a DisplayPort version of this because, well, DisplayPort. Links for these are below. Uh, they are affiliate links, so using them does help out the channel. Do you have a use case for these? Have you used them before? Um, do you think this is overkill? Let us all know in the comments. And if you have ever wondered why Dolby Vision doesn't work on Samsung TVs, I've got a great video for you right here. But keep playing in 4K and be excellent to each other.